All right, we're back for another Coach's Corner. You guys have carried on giving us some brilliant questions, so we'll carry on trying to do our best to answer them. But remember, you can, if your question's not been answered, you can uh, submit it either at the bottom of this video or on our social media using the hashtag Coach's Corner. And to get us started, we have this one from OT Ramble. I'm considering trying my first triathlon. I've got a Concept 2 stationary bike where I do all my cycling training. Is that okay with the intention of then organising a road bike for the event closer to the time, maybe borrowing or renting? or should I get one ASAP? Well, first off, welcome to the triathlon world. Yeah. If you're doing your first triathlon, it's awesome. Um, and I would say, to be honest, for anyone doing their first triathlon, don't worry about too much. Um, but I guess the key question here is, have you got experience riding a bike? Did you ride a bike as a kid? In which case, I'd imagine for your first triathlon, you'd be okay just pulling a bike out and jumping on that and getting around as long as you've done a bit of training for it. However, there are some skills when riding out on the road that you will need to kind of hone in on and, and practice. Yeah, you want to be relaxed and comfortable because, you know, you want to enjoy your first triathlon. If you're really nervous about riding a bike or you're not very balanced, depending on how long it is, you might want to be able to take a drink as well and that requires a certain amount of balance. And just being aware of if it isn't closed roads of traffic but other cyclists of how to kind of overtake things and all of that, there's so much to take in on the day. So. If you are new to cycling, we'd say get on a bike as soon as possible and just make sure that you're comfortable on it and you know, you're happy so you can go and have a good time. Yeah, because you don't want to ruin that first triathlon experience by having the saddle too low and your legs cramping up or just simply not being able to reach down to take a bottle of yeah. water. Even the little things like going around corners, if you're really tense, you waste a lot of energy. So just make it as enjoyable as possible um, and get out on a bike as soon as possible if you can. Um, great question though. Uh, next one from Yoshida Naburo. Um, they said, I have started using salt tablets during training and was surprised how effective they are. I wanted to ask what are the differences and similarities between feeling weak Weaker on the bike and run due to low electrolytes and low carbs. Oh my goodness. Well, dehydration, whether it's lack of fluid or lack of electrolytes, can seriously impact your performance. And I think that is the, the, the first key because your body actually has a huge amount of stored energy. Yes, it might not have a lot of stored carbohydrate, but you're not going to hit a real world or not going to get into a dangerous situation by running out of energy, whereas hydration, you really are. So before any event, you want to make sure that you've topped up your cars, but you are hydrated. And there's a kind of saying of once you're thirsty, then it's too late. It's showing that your body is already needing that. So making sure you're topped up well before, but also you're drinking regularly. And another key here, they kind of go hand in hand with the carbohydrate intake and hydration, because once you become really dehydrated, your stomach can start to actually really complain and then you maybe can't take on any carbohydrates anyway. So yeah, I think the kind of main thing I'm saying is, is focus on your hydration first, but only you will know the actual feeling yourself because everyone has a different reaction to you know, being having a deficit in either. Absolutely. And also take into account the intensity that you mm -hmm. are working at. As you start to work off, uh, harder, obviously you're going to need more fueling, both um, through fluids, electrolytes, and also carbohydrates. So, yeah, really big one. And I would say go and practice and train. Yeah, and experiment with it, yeah. for sure. Uh, leads us nicely on to this next question from George Willey. Uh, said, question about refueling after an Ironman triathlon or say a four hour bike. Do you need to refuel for the calories you burn during the event plus normal calorie intake? Also, should higher calories slash macros be included in the next day slash couple of days to help your body recover? Well, ideally, just fuel throughout, um, especially if it's a session, um, but more more important than anything, just listen to your body. Yeah, I think we get so caught up on numbers. We, you know, we train to numbers in triathlon and sometimes you want to eat to numbers, but our bodies are incredible things and they will know what you want. So if you have managed to feel throughout, then great. And you kind of just carry on your day as normal. If it's been really hard and say it's going to be quite a few hours to your next meal, then maybe you want to have a snack or some sort of recovery drink or something just to make sure that you know, you're know you already starting that recovery process. But you will notice sometimes, I don't know if you've noticed after events, that you can be hard hungry more the day after or two days after because mm. your body at the time just doesn't want to take on extra and there's no point in trying to force it because your stomach might be a bit upset as well and, and yeah so you, that just shows that you need that extra recovery time and that's when you're still fueling so try to be intuitive rather than sort of look at well the paper says this I must eat this now that's, yeah that's my feeling my gut my gut feeling yeah wait um, and I know you're probably looking for a magic number here or answer but um, as you said already listen to the body I tend to not even look at calories at mm. all I maybe look at carbohydrates 
carbohydrates when talking about fueling during a race and I factor in how many carbs per hour yeah. and I stick to that. But then around that, I'm just eating normally. Yeah. And so the calories is sort of irrelevant. So, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, this next one from Jeremy Mill. How do you figure out why you bonked on a run? For instance, was it going too hard on the bike or not enough calories taken in? We're still um, on this theme. Well, typically the term bonked is referring to our body's depletion of available carbohydrates. Um, they are interlinked though. So obviously you may have just simply have depleted the calories through your and carbohydrates through exercising. But also if you've gone so hard, that is going to potentially push you into that bonked state, partly because you may have been struggling to get the carbohydrates on board. And as you are going harder, it is harder for your body to process yeah. and absorb those carbohydrates depending on what you are trying to take Yeah, on. exactly. And at the end of the day, though, there's no amount of carbohydrate that's going to you know, stop that discomfort in your legs. If you have gone out too hard and you've hit the red and you've got some lactic acid build up in your legs, well, you know, that's going to be there and that's going to make the run very difficult. And also, if you're just not used to doing the brick sessions and you're not you know, strong enough, again, that's going to be down to your training. So we can't really answer what the problem is you're hitting, but you will know how much carbohydrate you're taking on and you will know how hard you're training and it's a matter of going back to the drawing board and kind of probably doing a little bit more training, I would say is more likely the, the problem that, that you're getting at the end. Yeah, it, you? and if you're, if you're really wanting to dive into this, maybe just need to pick apart that session that you bonked on, the paces, the intensity you're working at and see whether or not that was realistic for you and whether you have done the training, the preparation for that. If it was a totally out of the blue, super hard session, then that's probably the answer. Yeah, and it? it's also like how it feels, because I say that bonking feeling, you almost feel quite lightheaded, don't you? Rather than your legs mm. feeling dead. Yeah, you feel heavy, but you just feel like a bit woo. Whereas, um, yeah, if it's, if it's purely from you've gone too hard, then it's probably just like, oh my God, my legs are just gone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, next question from Francisco Minas, um, who is a wheelchair athlete. They said, because I'm a little bit slower than most people, specifically in the water and due to the hand cycle, should the amount of hours by week be the same as an able-bodied athlete or should I go for distance no matter if it takes me longer? Uh, first off, don't worry about comparing yourself to other athletes, particularly the pro athletes that you probably see lots of stuff being posted over social media. Everyone trains at different rates and obviously pro athletes have a lot more time available to train. Personally, um, I would just focus on the quality rather than the mm -hmm. quantity of your training. And with that, I normally, I've got to be honest, work by the amount of hours and that goes for kind of what you have available in your life. So uh, being realistic with yourself, as we were mentioning earlier, fitting that training in around your life. Um, I'd only use distance as kind of a marker as, you, as you're progressing and building up volume. So for instance, um, the swimming, you wouldn't want to suddenly overload and do far too much swimming in a short space of time. So you're just tracking that distance, but using the hours as kind of the overall yeah. kind of deciding factor. And I think another thing to bear in mind if you're if you're a wheelchair athlete that you're much more upper body dominated than an able bodied athlete. So, you know, your your swim, your your bike and your cycle, or sorry, your your hand cycle and your wheelchair run aspect is all upper body. So the training, you don't get as much of a kind of variation and you don't get that chance to sort of rest because swimming uses upper body and then if you're running you're using more of your legs. So I think don't I would say don't compare yourself at all in any way and really focus on you know, what your body is going through. Yeah, definitely. Uh, next question, Daryl McKee, uh, what's the opinion on training on race wheels versus a heavy aluminium set of training wheels? Uh, now that we have disc brakes, um, there's less wear on the braking track. Uh, very good question. You will obviously see us um, on a lot of videos rolling around on some very nice carbon wheels in we the will, rain. <laughs> yeah, and in the rain in some instances. Uh, we are, of course, very fortunate to have some very kind sponsors that provide us with those wheels. If it was my own hard earned money, um, I probably wouldn't be doing that, um, despite the fact that, as you point out, we do use disc brakes now, which means that it's taking away the fact that you might be wearing down the braking tracks that were ordinarily on the rims of the wheels. Um, Sim the reason being potholes in the roads, you've got the, the bearings and stuff in the hubs um, and just simply using them day in day out is going to wear them out and if you're out in rubbish weather it's going to wear them further. Yeah. That's not to say don't use them, be clever in the days that you pick to use them, the nice days, maybe some hard sessions because you want to get used to the feel of them and if they're deeper section wheels, that crosswind, yeah. just the feeling of the wind catching them. So you want to be confident on them but don't 
I wouldn't say don't go using them day in, day out. You or you could them. just do what I do and only ride when the weather's nice. <laughs> then I don't need to worry about changing my wheels. That's, that's my employ anyway. Uh, this next one comes from Shareth Talikat. Um, I've started doing my sessions, run and bike, after I recovered from COVID. I think this might relate to a few people here. I've had uh, three different leg injuries, injuries since then. Am I overtraining or have I become weaker because of COVID? How do I get back to my original form? I think coming back from any illness, I know you guys have covered it in a pre previous video but it's easy to think you know aerobically you can get back to where you were quite quite quickly depending on what illness it was but you can start to you get close to hitting those numbers but you won't realize that you will have lost some conditioning and it only that only appears later down the line so you think well now I'm back to fitness why am I getting injured but you've not had the chance for your body to kind of gradually build up and it's almost like being someone who's got an underlying fitness you can get back up there but those other muscles can't get cut back quite so quickly. And once you start to get a niggle, it then sort of has this constant repercussion. So I would say if you've got the, uh, the option or the time is to actually start to add in some strength work or maybe take out one run session and replace that with a bit more strength work. And I don't just mean going to the gym, I mean maybe some yoga or more stretching, more stability work for your core as well. I don't know if you're on the same page. Oh, that. absolutely. Um, and I, yeah, I think just as with anything, we, we often talk about this kind of one for every day off you have, you maybe takes another day extra to come back. So I don't know, a week off would mean two weeks to come back. Um, so just factor that in with your, your training as you're building back up. Uh, next question from Theo C365. Uh, what advice would you give to younger triathletes looking to train hard? Uh, should we do long runs slash cycles or focus on more short high intensity sessions? Um, as of anything, it's balance and as younger athletes I would honestly just recommend focusing more on just building up the endurance slowly and gradually rather than going too hard at such mm. a young age your body is doing is going through a lot of adaptation and change at a younger age and you don't want to hamper that too much by doing hard sessions day in day out and this is coming from experience having possibly done the wrong training as a as a young kid uh, particularly with the running um, there's a lot of impact with running and you really want to stick to lower volume and actually if it was me I would focus a lot more on the technicalities of it the technique um, and just getting those skills really honed in so that as you build up those foundations and as you you're older and you're able to absorb and do more you've got really good technique yeah. when you're doing that and I think it reflects you know look at the distance that you're you're training for because if you look at a, a national program or even you know the ITU programs that there's shorter distances for the younger athletes anyway so you don't they're not trying to encourage that endurance base because that that just comes with age and you'll you'll continue to improve your endurance for many many years but you want to make sure you've got you know you've looked after your body when you're young yeah definitely a final question from not my real name uh is is it okay to use a high cadence when running slowly and reduce stride length in order to reduce speed this is such a worry to me i tend towards uh doing this when then worry i'll never get my stride length long again this happens especially on the treadmill Oh my God, totally okay. I mean, go for an easy run with Mark and I, or maybe more with me, but kind of shuffle along. It's the easiest way to, the whole point of an easy slow run is to take that impact out off your body and the shorter your stride, the less impact. And it's what feels easy for you. And there's nothing easy about doing long, slow strides. And as soon as you whack that speed up, you're gonna naturally, your stride will go longer. You won't need to think about it. Yeah, and, and just include one session every week or two where you're doing some speed work. Yeah. Um, that then practices that slightly longer and accelerated stride. So um, honestly, I wouldn't worry about that at all. Do exactly as you are and yeah, it's enjoy worry. it, exactly. Well, thanks for a great array of questions, guys. Keep them coming, you know what to do. Leave it below this video or send in to us through the social media. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. It might have inspired some other questions and we look forward to hearing from them. Give us a like and if you've not yet done so, you can subscribe as well.